John 20, 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of God. John chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we like to thank you for this word, Lord, and thank you, Lord, that uh, Jesus made himself known to his disciples and specifically to Thomas um, just after the resurrection 2,000 years ago. And so our prayer is, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will make yourself known to us this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can a man rise from the dead. Can a man rise from the dead? Thomas has been with the other disciples and Jesus for three years. And on several occasions, Jesus tells them that he will die and then on the third day, rise up again. And even after the rest of the disciples tell him that uh, Jesus had appeared to them in a locked room. He still does not believe them. One thing that I love about the Bible is that it is not afraid to uh, share things uh, with us. It is not afraid to face the facts. Now, it, in this passage, it tells the story of Thomas who refused to believe his friends, his fellow disciples. And as John, the friend of Thomas, tells the story, because this uh, account is taken from John's account, which is the Gospel of John, he is not afraid to share the story of his friend Thomas, who refused to believe Jesus when it happened, who refused to believe his fellow disciples when it happened. So I wonder, as John is writing his story here, whether he actually asked Thomas for permission to he include this story in his gospel. So I take from this passage in John 20 that the Bible is what I call not a propaganda book. It doesn't blindly promote a belief. Because if you read propaganda writings, you will see that propaganda writings only present one side of the picture, and they refuse to present the other side of the picture. But here, 
The Bible tells us that Thomas doubted his fellow disciples and lets you work it out in your life. Because if Thomas has doubts and he's one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, what about us? Because I stand today in front of you and say that, yes, this book is what is known as a, a divine book, in the sense that God is speaking to us through this book. But I also believe that the Bible is a human book also. It is not afraid to speak of human doubt. If you read the Psalms, uh, the book of collection of prayers in the Old Testament, the, the thickest book, I believe, in the in the Old Testament, you will see that the Psalms are full of cries of men and women in which God doesn't show up in their life. And the person is trying to figure out his faith or her faith when God doesn't show up in their life. Or even in John chapter 11, when uh, Martha and Mary tell Jesus, who happens not to be in town, that Lazarus is sick. And Jesus doesn't come in time, and Lazarus dies. And so this is, again, in one instant in which when Lazarus dies, in which Jesus doesn't show up in the life of Mary and Martha. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas doesn't accept the words of his fellow disciples blindly. For Thomas, Jesus has to show himself. Jesus has to show up. And so Thomas puts a test, and I believe it's a kind of a prayer as he speaks to his fellow disciples. Unless I put my hands on his hands, on the nail scars, and, his, and then unless I put my hand on his side, I will not believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. And I can see how Thomas is trying to put his case forward here. He's trying to make sure that if he sees this person called Jesus appearing in front of him, the same person that the disciples had seen earlier, he wants to see those nail-scarred hands to make sure that it's not an imposter, to make sure that it's not someone pretending to be Jesus. And because he has spent three years with Jesus, he wants to put his hand by the side of Jesus to make sure that it is truly Jesus and not someone else. And the key phrase is, unless I see, unless I touch, unless I feel, I will not believe unless I see. And we are all in different stages of our lives today as we approach this resurrection, resurrected Jesus. Unless I see, unless I feel, unless I touch, I cannot believe Jesus. Unless I see that Jesus heals me from this illness, I cannot believe him. Unless Jesus gets rid of that difficult person in my life, I will not believe him. Unless Jesus brings in some money into my life today, I cannot believe him. Unless Jesus helped me start life all over again, I cannot believe him. Unless Jesus shows up, I cannot believe you, Lord. Unless, Jesus, you fix my life up, I cannot believe you. Jesus, are you there? And we all have a particular struggle with Jesus in our lives at the moment. And for some of us, the struggle is very real. We feel that Jesus is not resurrected. We feel that there's no evidence of life right now in our lives. But for some of us, praise God that we do see life and that we can truly say on this Sunday morning, He is risen, to which we all say, He is risen indeed. And so for some of us, our struggles are postponed to, for the next little while, but we know that that struggle 
will come back. And when it comes back, I just want to say to you, when that struggle comes back and you find it so difficult to trust in God, let me just say to you, that's okay. That's okay. Remember Thomas. And so a week later, Jesus and Thomas are in the same locked house a week later. I invite you to read the words in red with me. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my sight. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus shows up. Thomas puts a challenge before Jesus. Jesus shows up. And the doors are locked. The doors are locked. So this shows that Jesus' resurrected body can pass through doors and walls. But just to make sure that it's not a ghost in front of him, as John makes uh, uh, the account of the story, he makes sure that Thomas did really put his hands on Jesus' hands, and he really made sure that Thomas did put his hand on the side, just to make sure that it's not some apparition or some ghost in front of him. As John tells the story, he relates as to how Thomas responds to Jesus' request to put his hands on his hands and his hands by his side. And then Thomas shouts out because he cannot contain himself, my Lord and my God. So you have some problem with Jesus today and you put out this challenge before Jesus and you say to Jesus, unless I see the nail prints on your hand, Jesus, and I put my hands on your side, I cannot believe. I want to say to you, just as Thomas appeared to, sorry, just as Jesus appeared to Thomas 2,000 years ago, Jesus will appear to you. And he will say to you, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my sight. Stop doubting and believe. And Jesus has this personal message to you this morning if you have this problem. See my hands, touch my sight. Now, I want to make it very clear that the physical Jesus, the person Jesus himself, is up in heaven with the Father right now, with God the Father. So you might be asking me this question. How can Jesus show himself to us right now when he's up there in heaven with God the Father? Well, Jesus says that when he goes up to heaven, he will ask the Father to send his helper, the Holy Spirit, who will be with us. Can we read together John 14 verse 16, please? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. And so Jesus is present in our lives now through the person of the Holy Spirit. And he shows us his hands and his sight through the person of the Holy Spirit. He is going to help you face your doubt. He's in this struggle with you right now. And he's saying to you, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my sight. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas cries out, and I hope that in your struggle with God, you will be able to cry out in this manner in the future. My Lord and my God. And Thomas is touched by Jesus here. He realizes that the resurrected Jesus takes the trouble to address his doubts, Take the, takes the trouble to respond to his questions. As Thomas puts his hands on Jesus' hands and side, he realizes that he might be the one touching Jesus, but it is Jesus 
who is actually touching him. As Thomas touches Jesus' hands and sight, Jesus touches Thomas in the heart. As Thomas challenges Jesus to show him his hands and his sight, Jesus not only meets Thomas' challenge, but he, Jesus, reaches out and touches Thomas's heart too. And so I want to say to you, Jesus would like to touch your heart today. Shall we read together John 20, 29, the, the words in red, please? Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and still have believed. Jesus tells Thomas that because he has seen and touched Jesus, he believes. Jesus has touched Thomas' heart as Thomas has touched Jesus' hands and sight. But Jesus says to Thomas, however, one day in the future, there'll be people all around who will not have the presence of the physical Jesus in front of them, though he is resurrected and gone up to be with his Father in heaven. And although these people will not have the physical Jesus with them, they will yet believe in him. And when they reach out and touch him in faith, Jesus will touch their hearts too. Jesus will bless them too. So you might ask me this question because this relates to every one of us. And I encourage you this morning, put the challenge before Jesus. If you don't believe in him, ask him to show you his hands and his sight. So the question is this, how is Jesus going to appear before you if he's physically up in heaven? How can Jesus bless you? How can Jesus touch your heart now? How can we be able not to see Jesus and yet believe? Jesus now tells, or John tells us how we can do it in verses 30 and 31. Can we read the words in red together? Jesus did many other miraculous signs in front of his disciples. They are not written down in this book, but these are written down so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. If you believe these, you will have life because you belong to him. So reach out to Jesus through this word. Jesus still shows himself through this word and he wants to speak to you he wants to reveal his nail scarred hands and his broken side to you through this word are you willing to look for him there are you willing to search out for jesus there because jesus would like to show himself to you i call the praise team to lead us in the next few songs and as they come up i want us to bow our heads to close our eyes, each of us has a Thomas struggle with God right now. And you find it so difficult to believe in Jesus. You, you have this illness, you, your, your bank account is terrible. You, you have this struggle with this relationship at work or at home. You, you find it so difficult to finish your work in time at school, whatever it is, you have this struggle in believing in Jesus. I challenge you to challenge Jesus. Ask him to show you who he is. Ask him to show you his hands and his sight. Lord, show yourself to each one of us, Lord. Show that you are indeed the resurrected Lord. Help us seek you through this word. Help us find some truth in this word as life goes on. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.